Hey everyone, I'm Astrid, a single mom to the most amazing 10-year-old Tommy. He's autistic, and every day with him is an adventure. I wouldn't trade it for the world, but it's not easy, especially after a messy divorce. Right now, I'm packing for the annual family reunion, and Tommy is bouncing off the walls. Mom, do we have to go? Aunt Karen always pinches my cheeks too hard. I sigh, zipping up his suitcase. I know, buddy, but family is important, even when they're a pain in the neck. The truth is, I'm dreading this reunion as much as Tommy. My family isn't exactly known for their understanding, especially Aunt Karen and her son Derek. Last year, Karen had the nerve to say, maybe if you disciplined him more, he wouldn't be so, you know. Yeah, I know, Karen. But as a special education teacher, I've dedicated my life to advocating for kids like Tommy. So when my own family acts like this, it stings even more. As we pull up to the reunion, I give Tommy a pep talk. Remember your coping strategies, okay? If it gets too loud or overwhelming, just give me the signal, and we'll take a break. He nods, clutching his favorite fidget toy. Can I bring my own snacks? What if they don't have anything I can eat? Already packed, kiddo. I've got your back. We step out of the car, and the fake smiles begin. Aunt Karen is the first to greet us, her voice dripping with that insincere sweetness. Oh, Astrid, and little Tommy, hadn't you grown? She reaches for Tommy's cheeks, and he flinches. I step between them, forcing a smile. Hey, Aunt Karen, remember, Tommy's not big on physical contact. She huffs. Well, I never. In my day, children respected their elders. I bite my tongue. It's not worth the fight. Then I spot Derek lounging by the grill, his foam in hand, mischief in his eyes. Hey, cuz, brought the, ha, huh? he says, using a slur that makes my blood boil. I take a deep breath. Derek, that word is not okay. Tommy is autistic, and he's brilliant. Derek rolls his eyes. Whatever, same thing, right? I'm about to give him a piece of my mind when Tommy tugs on my sleeve. Mom, can we go inside? It's too loud out here. I nod, shooting one last glare at Derek as we head in. As we walk inside, I overhear the whispers. Poor Astrid, stuck with that burden. I heard autism is caused by bad parenting. Why'd she even bring him? He'll ruin the reunion for everyone. My heart cracks, but I stand tall. We faced worse. Tommy and I can handle one weekend with these people. Little did I know, this reunion was about to test us in ways I never imagined. The reunion was in full swing, and I was doing my best to keep Tommy comfortable. We found a quiet corner where he could play with his toys while I chatted with the few relatives who weren't as judgmental. But of course, Aunt Karen couldn't leave us alone. She cornered me by the punch bowl, her voice full of fake concern. Astrid, dear, don't you think Tommy should be mingling more? It's not healthy for him to be so isolated. I took a deep breath. Tommy's doing great, Aunt Karen. He's engaging in his own way. She tatted. If you just be firmer with him. I'm plenty firm, and I'm also understanding of his needs. Before she could argue further, Derek sauntered over. Hey, Aunt Astrid, want me to show Tommy around? Maybe introduce him to some of the younger kids. I hesitated. Derek had never shown interest in Tommy before. But maybe this was a chance for things to improve. That's actually really nice of you, Derek. Tommy, buddy, want to go with your cousin for a bit. Tommy looked uncertain but nodded. As they walked away, I felt a glimmer of hope. Maybe this reunion wouldn't be so bad after all. I couldn't have been more wrong. I was catching up with my cousin Sarah when I realized it had been a while since I'd seen Tommy. A knot formed in my stomach. Have you seen Tommy and Derek? Sarah frowned. I think I saw them heading out back earlier. I rushed outside, the knot tightening with every step. That's when I heard the laughter. Following the sound, I rounded the corner of the house and froze. There was Tommy, sitting on the ground with a can in his hands. Derek and his friends were doubled over, laughing, phones out and recording. As I got closer, I realized with horror what Tommy was holding, a can of dog food. Tommy, no, I shouted, rushing over. Spit that out, honey. Tommy looked confused and upset. But Derek said it was a special snack. I turned on Derek, fury boiling over. What the hell is wrong with you? Derek was still laughing. Chill, Aunt Astrid. It was just a joke. Look how many views it's already getting. I grabbed his phone, my vision going red. The video was already uploaded, and comments were flooding in. Lol, what a freak. 
Is he really eating dog food? Take it down. Now. No way. This is cold. By now, a crowd had gathered. Aunt Karen pushed through. What's all this fuss about? Derek grinned. Just having some fun with Tommy, right little dude? Tommy was rocking back and forth, clearly distressed. I put my arm around him. Your son tricked Tommy into eating dog food and filmed it. Take the video down, or I swear to God. Karen scoffed. Oh, don't be so dramatic. Boys will be boys. Tommy's fine, aren't you, dear? Tommy didn't respond, too overwhelmed. I looked around, hoping someone would back me up, but all I saw were awkward glances and poorly hidden smirks. That's when I knew we had to leave. We're done here, I announced, helping Tommy to his feet. And if that video isn't down by the time we get home, I'll be contacting a lawyer. Derek rolled his eyes. Whatever. Can't take a joke. As we walked to the car, I heard the whisper start again as I buckled Tommy into his seat, my hands trembling with anger and hurt. She's overreacting, someone muttered. Tommy didn't even seem to mind. This is why you shouldn't bring special needs kids to family events. In the rearview mirror, I saw Aunt Karen and Derek laughing together as we pulled away. The tears started to fall as soon as we hit the main road. Tommy reached out and gently patted my arm. Don't cry, Mom. The snack tasted bad, but I'm okay. His innocence, his kindness, even after what they'd done to him, broke my heart all over again. I swallowed hard, wiping at my face. I'm so, so sorry, baby. I'm so, so sorry. As we drove home in silence, I made a promise to myself and to Tommy, this wasn't over. Not by a long shot. Derek and Aunt Karen might think they'd had their fun, but they had no idea what was coming. Nobody messes with my kid and gets away with it. Nobody. The days following the reunion were a nightmare. Tommy's meltdowns became more frequent, the confusion and hurt from what had happened eating away at him. One night, as I tucked him into bed, he asked a question that broke me. Mom, why did Derek trick me? Aren't family supposed to be nice? I sighed, stroking his hair. Sometimes, honey, even family can be cruel. But that's on them, not you. You did nothing, Mom. Once he was asleep, I checked my phone. The video had gone viral. Comments flooded in, most of them filled with cruel jokes at Tommy's expense. My stomach turned. I spent hours reporting the video, emailing platforms to take it down. But for every one removed, three more popped up. Then the harassment started. Messages calling me a Karen for not being able to take a joke. Others saying Tommy deserved it for being weird. One night, fueled by anger and exhaustion, I started digging into Derek's online presence. What I found shocked me. This wasn't a one-time thing. Derek had an entire channel dedicated to pranks, most of them cruel, aimed at unsuspecting victims. Many targeted people with disabilities or differences. I reached out to some of the victims and their stories made my blood boil. A girl with a stutter whom Derek had tricked into giving a speech, only to edit the video to make her sound worse. A boy with ADHD whom Derek convinced to take fake focus pills that were actually laxatives. One mom, Sarah, whose son had been a victim, became my ally. We started compiling evidence, building a case against Derek. He's been doing this for years, Sarah told me during one of our late-night strategy calls. The school knows, but his parents always smooth it over. He's untouchable. But I was determined to touch the untouchable. Digging deeper, I discovered Derek's endgame. He wasn't just a bully, he was an aspiring influencer. His cruelty was calculated, designed to shock and go viral. He even had a press kit, pitching himself to brands as an edgy prankster. It made me sick, but it also gave me an idea. If Derek wanted to be famous, I'd make him famous, but not in the way he wanted. I started reaching out to every victim I could find, every parent whose child had been hurt. I contacted autism advocacy groups, anti-bullying organizations. I was building an army, one night, as I worked late into the evening, Tommy padded into my office. Mom, are you still trying to make the bad video go away? I nodded, pulling him into a hug. Yeah, buddy, but I'm doing more than that. I'm going to make sure Derek can't hurt anyone else like he hurt you. Tommy was quiet for a moment and said, Good. I don't want any other kids to feel bad like I did. His words strengthened my resolve. This wasn't just about revenge, it was about protection. It was about justice. As Tommy went back to bed, I looked at my wall of evidence. Screenshots, testimonies, video clips, 
all painting a clear picture of who Derek really was. I picked up my phone, dialing Sarah's number. When she answered, I took a deep breath. I have a plan, but I'm going to need everyone's help. As I outlined my idea, a mix of anxiety and determination bubbled inside me. What I was about to do could backfire spectacularly, but if it worked, if it worked, Derek would never hurt another person again. Maybe just maybe it would force my family and others like them to confront their own complicity in allowing this behavior to thrive. When I hung up, I looked at a picture of Tommy on my desk, my beautiful, kind, misunderstood boy. I touched the photo, making a silent promise. We're going to make this right, baby, no matter what it takes. The video dropped like a bomb. The real Derek, a history of cruelty spread faster than any of his pranks ever had. Testimonies from victims, clips of his worst jokes, and expert commentary on the harm of such behavior, it was all there. Within hours, Derek's follower count plummeted. Brands he'd been courting for sponsorships publicly distanced themselves. His dreams of internet fame were crumbling before his eyes. Then came the email from State University. In light of recent revelations, we are rescinding your acceptance. Aunt Karen, ever the enabler, went on a local news show to defend her misunderstood son. But in her attempt to paint Derek as the victim, she let slip. Of course I knew about the videos. Boys will be boys, and it was making him popular. The backlash was swift. Suddenly, it wasn't just about Derek anymore. The whole family was under scrutiny for allowing his behavior to continue unchecked. I used the momentum to launch Neurodiverse and Noticed, a campaign promoting understanding and protection for individuals like Tommy. The support was overwhelming. As for my family, most reached out with apologies, suddenly seeing the harm in their is just a joke attitude. But it was too little, too late. Derek and Aunt Karen tried to apologize too, but I wasn't having it. You had years to do the right thing. You chose cruelty instead. We're done. Tommy and I found a new community, one that embraced him for who he was. Support groups, understanding friends, and a school that actually celebrated neurodiversity. One night, as I tucked Tommy in, he smiled up at me. Mom, I'm glad we're not going to any more mean family reunions. I kissed his forehead. Me too, buddy. Me too. As I closed his door, I felt a weight lift. We'd been through hell, but we'd come out stronger. And more importantly, we'd made a difference, not just for ourselves, but for countless others who had been silenced for too long. The fight wasn't over. But for the first time in a long time, I felt like we were winning. That's the end of Astrid and Tommy's story. Now I've got a question for you. Was Astrid right to completely cut off her family, even those who apologized? Or should she have given them a second chance to make amends and learn from their mistakes? This is a tough one. On one hand, forgiveness can be healing. On the other, some actions might be unforgivable, especially when they hurt our kids. What would you have done in Astrid's shoes? Drop your thoughts in the comments below.